Hey, Miss Sawad, how you doing? Hey, Mr. Baldwin, doing good. So we're going to be talking about Earth's layers. We're going to focus in today on the crust and the mantle, and then we'll come back next time and focus in on deeper than that, right? Yeah, and then we'll talk about some of the properties of all those different layers. Okay, so we're going to differentiate between the physical and chemical properties mm -hmm. and the different layers and the way the lithosphere and asthenosphere behaves. Cool. All right, sounds good. All right, so first of all, uh, quick definitions. So when we talk about some of these layers, uh, we talk about some of them being rigid mm -hmm. and some being plastic. Okay. So rigid just means that they move as one unit. So okay. like all the rocks kind of flow together and they crack and they break. Okay. And then if we talk about plastic, it's kind of like moving like silly putty. So they stretch out a little bit. They flow like a liquid. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, just to put this out there, oh, I think, sorry, yeah. do you use the word rigid or do you sometimes use the word brittle? Sometimes I use brittle too. Okay, so they're going to be kind of used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. What's rigid and brittle? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So what we're looking at here is actually the different layers of the earth. And we can see that the top part, uh, it looks like the continental crust and the oceanic crust are both somewhat rigid. Mm -hmm. So those would move somewhat as a big unit. So they would crack, they would break a little bit. And then right below it, they're plastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, one of the layers they call the asthenosphere, um, is one of the plastic layers. So it kind of flows like silly putty, or uh, a lot of my students like to say like a marshmallow, a warm marshmallow. Okay, so when we're talking about different types of plate boundaries, and we're talking about a convergent boundary where the crust is being subducted down into the material below it, it's being subducted into it because that layer below it is plastic mm -hmm. and will deform in response to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So here we're talking about some of the layers where we're looking into the chemistry of them okay. and the depths and the temperatures. Okay. So real basics, we've got three main layers. We've got the crust, the mantle, the core, mm -hmm. and then the inner core too. Sorry, fourth one. Um, and so when we look at the inner core, it's actually solid iron down there. So iron, a mm -hmm. little bit of nickel, little sulfur. Bit of nickel. Yeah. Okay. And then when we look at the mantle, uh -huh. we're looking at some magnesium, iron, aluminum, silicates. Silicon. So yeah. magnesium, iron, aluminum, silicone, oxygen. Uh -huh. But more of the magnesium and iron. So uh -huh. we're going to call those things ferromagnesium. Okay. And then when we're looking at the crust, a little bit of difference between the oceanic crust uh -huh. and the continental crust in terms of the composition. Mm -hmm. So the oceanic crust would contain more of the magnesium and iron with the silicone and oxygen. And the continental crust would contain less of those and more of the lighter things like aluminum and sodium and, and some of those other things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we look at some of just the properties of these, they can all be separated by density too. Mm -hmm. So like obviously the most dense we said was towards the middle. And as you move out, it gets less and less mm -hmm. dense. And one of the reasons is because we have less and less iron as we move further out. And remembering, though, that the continental crust is less dense than the oceanic crust. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're talking the difference between the physical and chemical layers. So we can describe several or the layers in a couple different ways. Okay. And if we do it as a chemical way, then we would look at the core, the mantle, and the crust. Mm -hmm. So like you were saying before, in the core we would have our, our metals, so like our irons, our, we said sulfurs. Sulfur, nickel, and nickel. iron. Yeah. And then the mantle would be more iron, magnesium, and the silicates. And then the crust would mostly be a lot more of the silicates okay. there. And then if we're <clears> looking <throat> at the physical side of this, we're going to call these layers by different names. So we've talked about the lithospheres. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the plates moving in the lithospheric plates moving over the asthenosphere. Both of them are relatively thin layers. And that sits on top of the mesosphere, which sits on top of the core. So we've got the physical properties of the lithosphere being solid, the asthenosphere being plastic, the mesosphere being again solid but for that, the most part, yeah. for the most part, and then the outer core being liquid and the inner core being solid. And mm -hmm. we're going to be talking more about temperatures and pressures and why those layers are solid or liquid mm -hmm. based on that. And so some of the layers are overlapping. So you could call an inner core and an outer core if you're doing physical, but if you're talking chemical, it would just be the core. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And you were talking about before how um, the outer layers, that lithosphere and asthenosphere, were both relatively really, really thin. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you look in the picture on the left, that's actually the scaled version. So the core is like almost half the distance down there. 
And so it takes up the majority of what we have on Earth. Mm -hmm. And then outside of that, we've got that uh, mantle that's present. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, a really big distance. And then just that outer shell is that crust that we have. Yeah. So the way I kind of like to think about it is a hard-boiled egg. Mm -hmm. If you crack up the shell on a hard-boiled egg, that outer cracked shell mm -hmm. is about equal to the crust. Okay. And then the white part of the egg is similar to the mantle. And oh. then the core would be like the solid yolk in the middle of it. Okay. Makes sense. But Great. not the same shape, right? No. <laughs> not quite. All right, so I think that's our last slide for this section. So uh, go back and review if you need to, and then otherwise jump out to your web pages and hop into your quiz, and we'll see you in class. Have a good one, guys. Bye, guys.